Hello, my name is Guillaume Francois. Um, I'm a first year PhD candidate at uh, the University of Bristol. And today I'll be presenting my PhD, which is entitled Novel Structural Designs of Composite Wings. Uh, the work that I'm presenting here today is uh, about 10 months of research and is supervised by Jonathan Cooper and uh, Paul Weaver. So in terms of content, uh, today I'll first uh, explain what my research question is. I'll then move on to um, the uh, research strategy to answer um, this question. And then I'll move on to an initial study to show some of the results that we uh, have uh, found. And finally, I'll talk about con some conclusions and uh, some future work. So um, I'm sure that when you, you know that when you look at an aircraft, what you get to see is the aerodynamic wing. And within that wing, uh, there is a structure, which is here to carry the loads um, to, uh, to the aircraft. So conventional uh, wing structure are made of uh, straight elements. And that includes straight spars and straight ribs. There's obviously also straight stringers, but at the moment, this is not the subject of this research. So I'm mainly focusing on spars and ribs. The research question uh, for this PhD uh, was, what happens if we have curvilinear spars and curvilinear uh, ribs? And it can be summarized as, is this a better wing structure? Um, now, obviously, the question is, what is a better wing structure? So I define a better wing structure as being a structure with improved performances at reduced weight. But to designers, it probably is that a better wing is actually a wing with reduced weight at maintained performances uh, within a certain region. Um, and those performances are of two types. Uh, there's static performances and dynamic performances. Static performances look at things like a cruise deformation, um, and we're interested in the drag of the aircraft, uh, well, the drag generated by the wing, um, and how it impacts the fuel. We're also interested in the um, edge of the flight envelope and um, problems such as divergence and flutter in the dynamic case. Um, the reason why we're interested in those problems is that by tailoring uh, structural um, torsional rigidity and um, flexural rigidity, uh, we can reduce weight in the aircraft. And finally, we're also interested in um, maneuver and gust wing deformation. Um, and we're interested in the stresses generated during those um, events. The, re the reason being that by reducing the stresses, we can uh, hope to reduce the necessary structure and therefore reduce the weight uh, on the aircraft. Um, so here's the research strategy. Well, since we're up to trying to find the best shape possible for ribs and spars, um, it was a clear optimization problem. So we use an optimizer to generate a set of uh, shape for ribs and spars. Now, because um, this uh, research is quite novel, uh, we also included a layup control. So that's a standard stacking sequence optimization. Uh, the reason being that we wanted to have a benchmark case and because stacking sequence optimization is something that is more common in, uh, at least in research uh, in, in academia. So I'll go through the different uh, bold uh, text uh, into more details now. So first, the optimizer. Well, we use uh, something called particle swarm optimization, which is a global stochastic search method. So if you look on the bottom right graph, it'll show you how it works. Um, the little video should, will show that. So what it does, it, it creates um, a splash of particles, which are different trial solutions. And then based on those, it goes to find a global minimum. What's really interesting with particle swarm and the main advantage is it, doesn't, it does not require a function. It only requires you to make a solution and then go and try it. Um, particle swarm optimization is based on animal behaviors and how birds swarm uh, move to find uh, better um, wind current or better food uh, places, for example. Uh, moving on to shape and layup control. Shape control is performed using something called Bezier curve, which is a polynomial representation. Um, 
it's really useful because you only need to define a set of control points to find uh, the shape of a polynomial. Uh, for example, on, on this slide, I'm showing a third order polynomial, which is defined by just the four control points. Now, the layup control uh, is uh, very standard uh, in its uh, application. We're just optimizing the angle of each ply within the laminate, but we're not changing uh, the number of plies uh, within the laminate. And that generates a set of uh, uh, a new wing design. Um, so we're only interested in uh, realistic and feasible wing design. So we apply a set of constraint uh, to avoid processing unrealistic and unfeasible uh, wing design. So if it is realistic and feasible, uh, the solution goes through uh, FE, an FE, to an FE solver for uh, analysis, and we extract some of the performances that I talked about uh, earlier. Now, if it's not uh, realistic and, and feasible, we apply a penalty to let the optimizer know that this is um, a wrong solution. And that generates uh, uh, our cost. So moving on to the initial study, well, the initial study was performed on a diver on the forward swept wing. Um, Reason being that forward swept wing can be heavily constrained by divergent speed. So it's interesting to see if we could, re we could remove this constraint uh, to, for forward swept uh, wing. In this case, the aerodynamic wing shape does not change. We just change the shape of the under underlying structure. And the structure is made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So here are some of the results. Uh, these are three, three different types of optimizations. On the left side, we have um, a purely stacking sequence optimization. And we can see that we make no uh, wing weight improvement, but we increase divergence speed by 26%. The middle case um, looks at optimizing the whole of the wing structure, so we can control both the spars and the rib uh, shape. And that produced 8% reduction in wing weight and 4% improvement in divergent speed. Finally, the last case on, your, on the right um, shows uh, a spar optimization. So we only control the shape of the spars here. And we can reduce wing weight by 33%. Uh, unfortunately, we, uh, it came out that we also reduced uh, divergent speed by 4% in this case. So the main uh, point to take away from this presentation is that we proved that shape uh, optimization of structural members work as a narrow elastic tailoring method. Um, in some case, cases, we've been able to reduce by 33% the wing weight. We've been able to increase by 20% air elastic uh, instability speed. And we've also been able to reduce uh, root bending moment during a gust um, load case by up to 52%. Those improvements are comparable to what you can achieve with standard stacking sequence optimization. But what's really interesting is that you can actually couple the two together to harvest maximum improvements. And they should really work together uh, for maximum uh, wing structure improvements. So in terms of future work, well, um, there's Lots of research I still need to go through because that's only nine months of research that I'm presenting here. But today I'd just like to highlight uh, one key area where I think that um, this research could really benefit from an industrial input. So this area is in the model reality. Um, obviously the wing model that, we, that I'm using at the moment is relatively simple. And I'd like to increase its complexity towards some, something that is more uh, close to what wing designers use on a daily basis. So, you know, we're interested in adding constraints such as stress, buckling, manufacturing. Uh, but my question to um, industry is really at what point in terms of model reality do you consider uh, this um, idea as being feasible for um, implementing in wing design? Uh, here are my contact details if you uh, want to answer this question. And uh, thank you. I'd like also to thank you, the EcoRC, for uh, its funding. Thank you.